Hi, I'm Tian Yi Wang from the University of Hong Kong. Today I'm presenting my extended abstract, Automatic Classification Upon CVE Entries and Cybersecurity Articles. Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, CVE, a famous cybersecurity vulnerability database, is often referenced as a standard in cybersecurity territory for both research and commercial purposes. Common Weakness Enumeration, CWE, has provided useful vulnerability taxonomy on CVE entities, serving as a baseline for identification and classification on cyber weaknesses and vulnerabilities. In order to achieve maximum utilization upon CVE entries and CW categories, National Vulnerable Database, known as NVD, performs analysis on CVE entries that binds CVEs and CWEs. And here is an example showing that the CVE entry has the corresponding CWE ID 20 in proper input validation. <clears throat> However, the generation process of CWE categories is totally by manual working, and this has made cybersecurity professionals suffer from the unpredictable timing waiting for the up-to-date information to be published. Therefore, we propose automatic classification models that assigns CWE IDs to unlabeled CVE candidates with the adoption of CVE interests that have been labeled with corresponding CWE IDs. Um, actually, there are a considerable number of researches that have been done upon CVE interests. However, to our knowledge, only one published article was found attempting CVE classification with the help of CVE interests and the corresponding CWE categories. This study proposed naive Bayes on CVEs from 1999 to 2016 and performed vulnerability types classification for the top 10 CWE categories in terms of CWE frequency and acquired a 75.5% accuracy. <clears throat> Due to data unbalancing, we propose an automatic classification model upon CVE entries of the top 10 CWE categories in terms of the CWE frequencies. We propose three different deep learning, uh, deep neural network models and compare the, per, their performances. The first one we propose is the bidirectional LSTM. We applied embedding layers with the LSTM and followed by the dropout layer, fully connected layer, and the softmax. The output has a dimension of 10, which corresponds to the 10 CWE categories. After training with 100 epochs with, with the learning rate 5 times 10 to the minus 5, we obtained an accuracy of 75.85%, which is slightly higher than the existing work. Here's the loss curve of our model, and we can see that it converges. <clears throat> The next one we propose is CNN. We did the same thing by adding in embedding layer, dropout layer, fully connected layer, and softmax. More specifically, for the CNN part, we used three kernel layers, which the kernel sizes are 6 times 6, 5 times 5, 4 times 4, respectively. As a result, after training with the same hyperparameters for the CNN, we got an accuracy of 82.45%, which is much higher. And here's the loss curve, which also converges. The third one is the bidirectional encoder representation from transformers, known as BERT. It is a neural network-based technique for natural language processing pre-training. Uh, we used four epochs as suggested by the original paper. Then we got the accuracy of 83.73%, which is the highest. And just a reminder, the existing naive base claimed to have 75.5% accuracy. As a result, the novel BERT-based model outperforms LSTM, CNN, and the existing naive base work. Therefore, it shows a potential direction for improvement, that is, improving the fine-tuned BERT. The well-trained classification models can further be improved and adjusted to apply to real-life threat intelligence-related articles and reports for indexing convenience and performance evaluation in the future. That's it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kasper Graydon, and I will introduce the notion of the so-called future crimes in relation to the practices of the law enforcement and intelligence services. For the purpose of my work, I call the internet and related modern technologies the new battlefield, where two sides of the struggle 
the criminals on the one side and, and law enforcement on the other fight and compete for, for domination. The reason for the use or abuse of technology is quite simple. It's a multi-purpose tool that is easy to use and inexpensive and enables uh, maintaining high degree of anonymity while reaching global goals. Additionally, due to generational changes, the so-called digital natives, new generations of, of offenders highly skilled uh, with modern technologies will be entering criminal market uh, in the near future. Uh, we can see a sudden shift in trends from the traditional notion of uh, cyber crime to abusing technology with the effects in real life circumstances from the preparation stage until the completion of the crime. And the so-called future crimes deal with all aspects of criminal behavior from regular crime to organized crime, terrorism, violent extremism, uh, up to cyber warfare. Uh, one of the uh, things to look at is, is the open source intelligence based attacks where the victim selection and monitoring uh, or target selection is done online using various sources of information. One of the interesting new developments is the abuse of wearable technology uh, to profile victims. Uh, one of the interesting cases uh, is the recent Strava uh, data abuse uh, that, that was used to disclose the location of American military bases abroad. Uh, we, we, we can see recently that also the so-called pet wearables are, are, are used to track uh, the victims or uh, the human victims or their whereabouts. Uh, and generally speaking, social media information is, is most frequently used for by the criminals uh, in cases like, like child grooming, child pornography cases or human trafficking. Uh, also to groom and, and, and profile potential violent extremists. Uh, this is a quite well-known problem, but due to the uh, decrease in price of 3D printing technologies, we can expect such crimes to be on the rise in the near future, 3D printing abuse, as well as the attacks on the Internet of Things, either the specific devices owned by specific people or the whole networks of IoT-enabled uh, uh, devices, including the medical devices, which pose a, quite a substantial threat nowadays. Uh, in the near future, uh, in, in our analysis, uh, we also covered the potential abuse of autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicles used as weapons or roadblocks or kidna even kidnapping devices, as well as the use of various types of drones for surveillance as weapons for the delivery of drugs or for the disruption of air traffic control uh, systems. Military robots might seem to be a distant future, but the technology is getting cheaper, so we might brace ourselves for potential abuse of such technology in the future. Uh, the next notion is cyber warfare with the specific stress put on this information um, and misinformation used by rogue governments to, uh, to attack democracies, uh, as in the cases of, of US presidential election meddling, the Brexit, uh, or the whole armies of trolls, either humans or, or bots, uh, that are used to destroy the social fabrics of, uh, of these societies. The artificial intelligence is a whole new chapter, uh, as, uh, and the same goes with blockchain or cryptocurrency abuse used by the criminals uh, worldwide for various uh, reasons and, and, and objectives. New horizons that we can um, expect in the criminal market will be the abuse of emerging technologies such as quantum computing, and the technologies that are entering the market, such as 5G telecom networks, that will pr provide increased capabilities for the criminal offenders or terrorists. So to summarize, uh, those technologies make up the so-called sum of all fears, uh, something that we need to uh, get ready for. If you have any questions, please reach me on email. Thank you very much and goodbye. Welcome, uh, with my colleagues from the University of Lausanne, we will present some uh, advanced recovery um, and uh, forensic analysis of MySQL data in deleted states. So databases in general are widely used by organizations uh, to store information uh, that could be um, very relevant to a wide range of investigations, uh, such as uh, criminal cases, civil disputes, or data breaches. And the idea of this uh, work is to provide some guidance for investigations that uh, uh, involve uh, databases. 
and uh, we propose a multi-stage approach um, to the forensic recovery and the forensic analysis of um, deleted data in uh, databases. And uh, the idea is uh, to uh, have a more comprehensive uh, reconstruction of alteration at the end. So the first uh, stage uh, is to, um, the idea is to have multiple version of the um, database of interest um, and those version uh, to have them uh, through time. So we will look at uh, historical uh, databases version uh, for this, we can use uh, backups of the database, audit logs, uh, but also we can use some carving uh, techniques um, to find deleted um, database files. So for instance, for MySQL, it could be FRM files or uh, MYD files. And we could also uh, try to carve some backup files. Once we have those multiple versions of the database, um, the idea is to compare those different versions um, to find some um, records that could have been altered. And uh, so we can find uh, some records that are present in only one version of the database, or uh, we could also find some records that have the same primary key, but different values. And so, the, the idea is really to, to, to target some record that, that could be of interest for more in-depth analysis. The in-depth analysis, the idea is uh, now to dive um, inside the record structure and inside the record uh, data to find exactly what data have been uh, altered. We can also look at um, uh, deleted records. So database engine usually work um, in the same way as a file system. So when a record is deleted, the data might still be present in, inside the file of the database, but it will just be marked as deleted. And so really the, this last, um, this uh, third stage, the idea is to really identify what an, what data exactly has has been modified and and um, and now the the last stage the the idea is to find how so for this we will use some contextual analysis uh, of the re, of the altered or deleted records so um, usually uh, records are added in a sequential uh, manner and using timestamps of the record um, and also the position of the records inside the files, we can uh, start uh, to infer some uh, possible alterations. So how the deletion occurred and also when. So to, to, sum, to sum up, the, the idea of this multi-stage approach is first to find some um, element of comparison uh, using different version of the database, then uh, using some um, large screening comparison to uh, try to identify some records of interest, then to look at in depth at those records to find what data was um, modified and uh, de or deleted, and then using uh, some contextual analysis, try to um, understand how the deletion or the alteration occurred. Thank you for your attention and feel free to contact us if um, you have interest or any question.